uh, we are recording from now. So as I say, if you have any questions, please do unmute yourselves um, and I will endeavour to answer as many as I can. If I don't know the answers, I will find out for you and post it into the groups. Um, I have been entered into all of your groups on WhatsApp, I believe, so um, I will get back to you if I don't, but hopefully I know most of them. So let's get going. So we will work, first of all, with our line below shoulders. Now, on Thursday, no, on Friday, I'm going to do a big demo on um, elevation over direction and what they actually do for you. I've got a class in Loughton who's at a similar level to all of you guys. We've just got through our setting and we're primarily now looking at doing something cutting wire. So they've done their lines below and they're moving on to their layering work. So it's going to be quite nice if I'll also record that video. So I'll get you guys in on that as well or send it into your group so that if you are busy in that day, then you can um, access. So we're going to start now. I, I work hair differently. My background is quite heavily in a company called Vidal Sassoon. And they were heavy, heavy hair cutters. If anybody knows uh, about Sassoon, um, can you say your name again? It was a bit late. Where do you work? Just a quick one. Yeah, sorry, my bad. So uh, my name is Robert. Um, nice to see you. I'm working in the Loughton Academy. Um, I'm a tutor over there, um, Monday to Friday. Um, my background is uh, Vidal Sassoon fully. So I started there an apprenticeship when I was 16 and um, worked my way up through the company to uh, become assistant creative director and um, worked myself onto stage shows, shoots and um, backstage work. So um, Works for LHA for just over a year now, I think it is, yeah, um, over a year. And uh, so yeah, that's my background. Um, so as I assume, we were heavy, heavy cutters. So we focused on technique and focused on making the hair actually work for you, as opposed to working around something or working with something that you don't really um, know how to control. So the fundamental thing for me with a line or a one length below shoulders is balance, okay? Now, when you guys come on to being a qualified stylist, or even before you're qualified, start charging money for your haircuts because you want to be earning money. That's the, that's the key thing. But the biggest thing you want to do is make sure your balance is absolutely perfect, okay? There's nothing worse, and I've had it before myself, where you're showing somebody the back and they say, oh, is it, is it longer on one side? And yeah, you have to say, oh, yeah, let me just cut that off a little bit. So balance is absolutely crucial. And... There's certain ways that I work that you can control your balance and it's perfect every single time. So I'm going to run that through with you with your line work. So you'll see with my mannequin here, we've got our center partum and then I've sectioned off my um, front from my back. Okay. But I've worked it from um, my crown area. So obviously we're aware where our, um, our feature points are. So you've got your front hairline, your crown, your nape, and your outline hairline, okay? For me, these are your, um, things I call them your danger zones, okay? So your danger zones are areas that you can find something in the hair that is gonna um, give you cause for not doing a certain look, say cowslicks, for instance, jumpy hairlines, nape whirls, uh, double, triple crowns even. So fundamentally looking at where you're working is a, is a primary thing to controlling your danger zones. So. I've got my section from my crown area and it's running into the top of the ear. And this is going to primarily section away my front from my back and clean my work up completely, okay? And I'll explain to you why I'm doing this a little bit later on as well. Sometimes we work from our radial section and our radial section pops into the top of the ear. So for those of you who have done your sectioning work, you should have done by now, I believe, you have your profile and you have your radial. Okay, they're the fundamental looks that we start with at the LHA. But if you work from your crown, it's a little bit cleaner and a little bit easier. Because we're working with the hair, where the hair naturally wants to go and where the hair naturally wants to fall. So if we see when we're working our lengths in the base, everything in this back section is falling where it naturally wants to fall, yeah? This area here is really where we find the big difficulty or the big area of concern. So from this little point down here onto the ear, stretching up through our radial section. So this whole piece in here is quite a difficult section of hair to control. 
if you work from your radial, okay? The reason for is you're gonna be over-directing this hair that wants to sit in behind the ear and control this big expanse here. You're gonna be pulling that back to the underneath or back to the side pieces or back to the back. Okay, really we want to leave this piece of hair to fall where it naturally wants to fall. If we do that on both sides, our balance is gonna be perfect, okay? But we'll get onto that, all right? So I'm gonna tighten her up, push her head slightly forward, which is gonna help us control our work. Now, this mannequin here, you're gonna to have, to, you have to bear with me a little bit because this mannequin has got some funny growth patterns um, in her hair. I've never really, seen a mannequin with a double crown and a cowslick in the front but the cowslick seems to work all the way around from the top of the head to the right side of the face so um bear with me <laughs> and we're going to begin so i'm going to lift her up so you guys can see and just solely work on this back section first of all so i want to choose the length that i want to go for and i want to flow that length forwards okay so i'm going to run my section from my crown down into the nape and just extend my profile section completely from front to back and separate the two pieces of hair either side. One thing you'll also see from me probably during this um, call is I'm quite clumsy. Uh, so if I drop my comb, uh, I do apologize, but I, I tend to drop my stuff quite a lot. Um, so just bear with me if that happens. So, we are now going to work our sections away from the central point or the central profile shape. Okay, now, uh, how am I gonna work these? Can anybody anybody say how we're gonna work these sections? Um, you are all on mute and if no one wants to answer then that's fine. But how would I go from here? Where's my next section? Those of you who have done your one length work before. Can anybody say? Is it like an inch? You use the width of your comb. Nice, yeah. And then do like an inch, like along, along yeah. each side. Wonderful, yeah. That's a, do you know, I, I never even thought of that before. That's a really good, um, that's a really good way of, of measuring your section. So using your, your comb or your tool as a, as a guide. I, I like that, that's quite good. Um, really good. Sarah, was that Sarah? You are still off mute, I believe. So um, well done, really nice. So that's a nice little way of working it. So if you want to get your um, get your balance and get your thickness of section, utilize your tools. Your comb is never going to change thickness. So um, take a bit from each section and start in the middle. Yeah, nice, very good. So we're going to start on the left hand side, and as Sarah says, just about an inch high off the underneath hairline, we're going to start with our first section. Okay. So that section is gonna run just off into the left-hand side hairline. And really important is that we clean our sections up straight away. The cleaner your work from beginning of your course, I promise you, when we get to the stage of doing short grads, graduated bobs, they are gonna be so, so much easier if your sectioning is clean and tidy and your work is really, really neat. So really focus on getting your work I'm going to change my clip, it doesn't seem to be clipping. Really focus on getting your work as clean and tidy as you possibly can before you get onto those um, haircuts that people say are the most difficult ones. Now, for me, the, the, the line below shoulders or the one length is the most difficult haircut that you can possibly do. The reason for is there is no room for error. You, if you move your body or move yourself too much, you're going to lose your control. So, this is really the most difficult cut to do. And once you master this, the graduated bob and the short grad, everything like that, the round graduation is so much easier, I promise you. But you'll see here that we've got it slightly angled. Now, slightly uh, diagonal from the center into the front. Now, my reason for doing that is we've got to remember where the head position of our guest is. So she's got her head forward slightly at the moment, okay? now. If I were to cut with a dead square line from the back profile lengths into behind the ear, what's going to happen is when she walks down the road, she's going to lift her head up and the front's going to come up shorter. Okay. I don't know if anybody's ever done that before or ever seen that before in somebody's hair where they've done a perfect, perfect line or a perfect bob, for instance, or a perfect line below the shoulders, but the head's been forwards the whole time. As soon as you lift that head up, the length in the front's going to change. Hopefully that makes sense. But 
you want that to be slightly diagonal to control the way our head's moving, okay? And the reason we have the head forwards is we control anything called outline graduation. So your graduation, if you've ever seen somebody walking down the road and they've got a perfect one length, but then they look down to the floor and the hair sort of splits, doesn't it? It gets that real bittiness on the bottom. That's called graduation. On Friday, we're gonna go through what graduation is, what elevation is. So don't focus too much on that for now. Um, also, hopefully next week, I'll do another video with you guys as well. Um, and we can get into doing something a little bit more technical, but you want to control your line at the moment and control any form of graduation. So by having a diagonal line, it just helps us for when she lifts her head up, the hair is completely smooth the whole way through. Okay. Now we're going to start working through our combs. Okay. I think a lot of you will go through your fingers, but I'm going to work mine through my comb, which is a little bit easier. Um, it's something more pushing for level three work, but it's going to aid you fully. So your comb is straight. As Sarah said earlier, use your comb as, as your balance. Your comb is straight. If you're using that as your guideline, your line will always be perfect and always be straight. Okay. So I'm going to stand in directly behind my guest. I hope you can see um, what I'm doing. Hopefully you can. And comb goes in with the small end of the comb. Scissors will come up and go behind the comb, okay? So that we're controlling the hair as we go. And we'll come down into our shape. And hopefully you can still see that, good, that's fine. And we're gonna take our line on our chosen length. Okay, now the most important thing is that we keep our body straight. The, mo the, the, the biggest thing people do when they have a longer shape in one side is just lean your shoulder. As soon as you drop your shoulder down, you lose control of your body position. So you will feel a bit stupid when you start working, but you've got to keep your body flat and just bend your knees, okay? So that everything is staying in that straight line the whole way around the head, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. As, when you come onto bobs and things, in, in these sections here behind the ear, you're going to find that really tough to keep your balance when you start to drop your body shape and start to drop your shoulders. That's crucial to keeping your balance. So we're going to stay in the back again. And if anything happens where I start leaning my shoulders, I'm just going to leave that section for a little bit later. So again, into my left hand side, bend my knees, keep everything nice and straight and just run my lining okay and then we're just going to come up the shape so section number two and keep it ever so slightly diagonal into the front because we've still got the guests head forwards for now and nice clean sections as we go hopefully you guys are all using your water sprays quite considerably as well in um, in academy there's nothing more important than a water spray because you want to keep the hair on the same texture and on the same density the whole way through. If you start working when the hair is soaking wet and then begin to let the hair dry as it comes through, you're going to change the tensions in your hair. Okay, so really important that we start to work our shape a little bit more um, wet the whole way through or evenly wet the whole way through. So again, section number two, come back into the center and Gonna run my shape down, keeping a nice tension, bending my knees and keeping my shoulders nice and flat and straight. And then run my line into the front. Are there any questions so far? Anyone got anything that they don't really understand or anything that I've said that's a little bit confusing or is it all sounding okay at the moment? So obviously you're all on mute, so please do unmute yourselves if there's anything you want to want to say or anything you want to add or use the chat bar down in the bottom and we can um, make sure we get some of those sounds all good so far perfect excellent um so now we're going to go again and next section now i use quite big sections you don't have to start like this i would say go for something a little bit smaller to start with just to get the control of your tools and get control of what you're actually feeling um the big difficulty is when some people see a, a demo going on and um, they think, oh, your section's got to be that big already. It doesn't. Just as long as you're controlling and feeling comfortable, the biggest part or the biggest 
thing that I say to all of my students is just feel comfortable with what you're doing. There's nothing worse than leaning over there and cutting hair or leaning around and cutting hair. If you, you've got to move the body, move your body. If you've got to move your guest's head around, move her head around. That's what she's there for. She's only there for an hour maximum if you're cutting their hair. So you've got to make sure that, sorry, my work phone's going off. <laughs> That's unprofessional. You've got to make sure that you're um, in a comfortable position for you. Also, you're going to be cutting hair for a long time through your career. If you're bending your back and you're bending yourself around all the time, you're, go you're going to be in a lot of pain. So making sure that you're comfortable is the most important thing. So by keeping your back straight, your shoulders straight, you're not only going to be keeping control of your overall work and your overall line, you're going to keep your balance, but also keep your body, which is, which is great. And by the time, by the time we're a little bit older and we can't um, be doing hair anymore, um, it's going to be a bit of a job to, to keep getting yourself up and going to do a haircut if your back's hurting. So really important that you keep control and keep focus of yourselves. So now we're going to come into the top. Now, again, I do this slightly differently. Um, you can come all the way up to the top if you want to. That's absolutely fine. Um, but personally, I like flow. I like to keep the hair moving from one place to another and it connects and everything moves together. So the idea is that she walks outside, gets caught in the wind and the hair all moves at the same point and then falls back into place where it needs to go. Okay, so I'm gonna run my line into the front piece. Now, we're gonna cancel out that um, section from our crown into the top of the ear for now and we're going to remember where that went but i'm going to run my line from the very back profile into the very front but keeping that slight diagonal look into the shape okay and this is going to aid our flow and aid our shape now there's two ways of cutting these front pieces or the side pieces sorry not the front but front and side um, you can either bring them all to the very back, which is going to elongate your length in the front, or you can step into the side and run the shape in perfectly. Now, for purposes of this video, to keep some length in the front, because we don't know how long we're going to be in the situation for, uh, I'm going to pull my shape to the back piece. And this is where we start to think of something called over direction. Okay, so over direction is where you pull the hair away from its natural fall to create something additional with additional length, okay? Don't focus too heavily on that for now. Um, that is something you're gonna cover when you go further into your education. But when you pull hair away from where it naturally wants to fall, you're increasing the length because you're increasing how far that hair is traveling to sit into the place that you want to connect it to. Hopefully that makes sense. So what we're gonna focus on is keeping the head forwards or keeping her tilting her head forwards. If I were to come into the side and run my line through, I'm gonna to wanna to lift my head up because obviously, as we said earlier, nobody walks down the road with their head down like this. Um, we wanna lift the head, make sure there's a 90 degree angle between the chin and the chest, and that line will run through evenly both sides if your shoulders are flat and her head is in the same place. Okay, but we're gonna run this shape from, back to, from front to back. So I'm gonna over direct. So, we're now going to start working the hair in our fingers if you want to, because pulling the hair back in your comb is very difficult to keep your tension. As you can see in there, mine's already dropping away now. So to keep control of the look, we want to make sure we get a nice clean tension. So standing in the back again, we're going to run our shape down and connect. But where do we go back to is a big, is a big thing. So do we pull it right back to the center or do we pull it back just to the shoulders or do we go, um, do we pull it back right off to the other side? And that's a big question that I, I am asked quite a bit and I'm not asking that for you guys to answer because it is something that I don't think um, is covered too much here, but you're going to find out that your body is all in line. So I'm getting off track again here, but there's two bones in here. There's a bone here called your occipital bone, okay, um, or your O-bone. You'll hear people call it occipital or O-bone, okay. Then there's two bones just behind your ear. If you feel the back of your head that jut out about here and here, okay, they're called your mastoid process bones. Don't focus too much on those, okay. But what they do 
is connect in your shoulder blades. So your shoulder, where your body, so my shoulder blades are about, I'd say they're about here on my back. And then if you run up, my mastoid process is just behind my ear, yeah? So everything is in line in your body. When we come onto dimensions of the face, you'll see that things in your face are all symmetric and, and connect. But your, your head, bones in your head connect with bones in your body. So you can use your shoulder blades as your, um, as your focal point. So if you're cutting, if you imagine she's got shoulders in here, and then we've got our shoulder blades in the center, I'm gonna over direct back to my shoulder blades. Okay, and then that's gonna keep my balance both sides because most people are quite symmetrical with their bodies. Chances are they're gonna be pretty symmetrical. So we can use the symmetry of the body to keep our balance. So again, my shoulders are nice and flat and my um, head is up and my um, work is gonna be nice and straight. I'm gonna over direct my section back into the section with her shoulder blades or imaginary shoulder blades Obviously my mannequin's not gone. Uh, and we pull that shape back into the shoulder blade area, okay? And then section number two, again, work our length up. Now, if I were coming into the side, that's when we start to focus on the section that we had in before. So from the crown into the top of the ear, because that section, as we said earlier, is going to fall into this section here behind the ears. And that's a difficult area to control. It's a difficult part of the hair because if you think of how much density of hair we've got at the back of our heads and we lose half of that density to the side of our heads because obviously in here, we've got an ear. <laughs> so we've got to control this area. And when we come on to layer in later in the week or later in the couple of months, we're going to find out how we control this big expanse of space. And by doing that with a, a section from your crown to the top of the ear, you allow this hair here to fall where it naturally wants to fall. So all turns it all alternatively already, it's controlling that section, if that makes sense. You're keeping that hair pushing into the position that you want it to go. So moving up with our line, we're going to stand in the back again. I've run out of hair there, which is good. And I'm going to stand in the same position. My feet aren't moving. My shoulders are staying flat. My head is staying up her head staying forwards, and we're just over-directing our section from the front into the back to ensure that we leave some length in the front. Obviously, we're gonna be starting to do our forward graduation a little bit later, but we're allowing ourselves to know where we're over-directing the section to, to keep our balance. So just assessing that looks quite nice. So I'm gonna switch sides now so that hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing this side, get out of the way of the camera. And we're gonna go again, so nice and spray. And if I just jump in front, we're going to balance our left hand side. So again, comb everything forwards, really important that we groom the hair through. And then it makes it very easy with our section to just come through with the wide tooth of our comb and just push our length into the front, okay? So section's in, <laughs> section is in there nice and clean. And I'm going to work this left-hand side. So hopefully you can still see. Do we have to make sure we continue to cut zero degrees when we have our back? So yes, you do. Um, nice, that's a good question. Um, I didn't really wanna get into too much detail with degrees. Um, but I will. <laughs> uh, as soon as you lift the hair off zero degrees, um, you start to graduate the hair, okay? So you start to lift weight out of the hair as soon as you lift the hair away from the back of the person. So when we talk in degrees, I'm not one for talking about 45, 90, 180, too much, because I think it can, it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult to really describe that. And I'm not gonna ever personally get a protractor out and check your work is actually at 45 degrees instead of 44. But when you're working at zero degrees, it's just, it's called elevation. And as soon as you lift the hair away from the back of the person, you're taking weight out. So as we said earlier with our um, graduation that we've formed on our line. So when she's walking down the road and she looks to the floor and it sort of splits down, all of that 
on the bottom that we then come through and clean off at the very bait or at the very end of the cut that's your graduation so that's if you've lifted the hair away from the back of the person so not cut the hair at zero degrees of elevation hopefully that makes sense hopefully that answers your question but when you're coming into the front yes keep it at zero degrees as well perfect yes you're going to find out more about degrees later in your course don't don't focus too much on additional degrees of elevation um but yes you're absolutely right zero degrees is key for doing a, a line and it just makes sure that you keep control of all of your outline graduation and that's the only thing we're, we're concerning with which is why i say this is the most difficult haircut because if you if you over direct the hair too far you're going to be off balance if your shoulders have dropped you're going to be off balance if you lift in the hair away from the head in, even in your fingers which is why i cut it in the comb but your fingers have a degree of elevation that's a, a i don't know how many degrees that would be but um <laughs> depending on how how big fingers you've got um you're, you're elevating the hair so it's so crucial to keep it in and that's why your technique on a line below shoulders or above shoulders is so crucial so again we're going to over direct from front to back find our shoulder blade area and ensure that my body is all flat my my body is nice and clean and we're going to just over direct that section back into where the guest shoulder blades would be okay and then we're just going to move on so i'm going to split this into two sections now just to get a move on run that into the front so again groom the hair forwards makes it really easy to keep your work nice and clean. It's a big thing of our jobs at the LHA is to, yes, to educate you guys about cutting and colouring hair, but also give you information about when we worked and, and how we got so busy when we were in salon. So I found that um, when, you're, when your sections are nice and clean, your guest in salon really makes it, or it makes it look to the guest, I used to think, that you are knowing what you're doing and you're very very professional if you've got sections all over the place it's all messy and all untidy and um all uh your sections half dropping out of your clip it i think it looks a little bit unprofessional and it makes you look a little bit like you're getting a bit lost in the haircut personally as well i talk a lot but i also get quite angry if my sections aren't clean and tidy so for me it keeps my mind keeps my mind at ease keeps my mind healthy really and allows me to keep control of where i'm going with my haircut so grooming the hair and manipulating the hair there's my first comb drop uh, um grooming the hair and manipulating the hair into where you need it to actually be is so crucial to keeping your work nice and clean um also uh, a little a little thing that i do which is just completely over the top and I wouldn't say do this, but I have a lot of different colored combs just so that guests in salon see when I drop it and see that I don't use the same comb. <laughs> just a thing that I do. But so now if we're going to check our balance, um, make sure she's nice and straight. And I'm going to make sure that my balance is on point, which it should be. Hopefully it is. <laughs> That'd be embarrassing. Perfect. So balance is good. Hopefully, you can, I don't know if you guys can see that, but if I shake her up a bit, you'll be able to see. So my line runs through from the very back into the front, gets a little bit longer into the front on both sides because we've over-directed back from um, our front piece into our back. Make sense? So if we were coming through and we weren't over-directing, we'd have the head up and then just run the line through into the front piece. So there's two forms of line that you can possibly do. Um, does that make sense? Uh, are there any questions or um, anything that you don't really understand or anything that I should um, recap over before we move on? If somebody give people a couple of seconds if they're typing or finding the unmute button. If not, then we'll move on. Oh, good. Perfect. So we're going to move on to layers. Now, we're going to start very, very simply with uh, something called a square layer. Uh, this technique of over direction works also with short hair. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Um, over direction, elevation and over direction are your two fundamental principles of cutting hair. 
Now, with colouring, it's very scientific and it's very much um, formulas and mixing ratios. With cutting, if I'm honest, it's elevation and over direction. You elevate to take weight out. So the higher you lift the hair, the lighter the hair becomes. And the further away you pull something from a certain position, the longer that piece is going to create. When you come onto your shortcuts, um, your graduated bobs, for instance, you're going to be working with shapes. And I'm not going to get into that because uh, <laughs> I just don't want to confuse you. But you'll start here and everything will be pulled back to here. So you're going to be going from short and gradually the hair is getting longer and longer as you come forwards because you're traveling, each piece of hair is traveling further. So over direction creates your shape, eleva elevation creates your weight, if that makes sense. But it will do when you come to later. Uh, what combs do I use? I use Wyatt's Park. Um, it's a Japanese company. Uh, they, they get them online. Um, they are coming all different colors, which is why I quite like them. As I say, I'll drop them, so I, I move them on. Um, they're, I like them. They're easy to hold. They're quite nicely balanced. Um, also a nice brand of comb is a Bui. Um, so I know there's a guy um, who I work with in the LHAA who uh, he uses Bui combs, fantastic comb. Um, really, you've got to find things that work well for you and the comfort for you. Um, your scissors as well. Scissors are a, are, are a big thing. The ones you get with us are good scissors. So keep using those on your mannequins. Um, mine are uh, wing scissors. Um, I use these. I've used these since I was um, first qualified. Um, they're fantastic. I like the size of them and I like the way they work. So just find what tools work for you. As I said earlier, the most important thing is your comfort. If you've got a comb that's really big and really long and you like it, or a pair of scissors that are like six, six, seven inches long, if you find that you can work with them, then work with them. I just can't. <laughs> so I find that's a little bit difficult. Um, sorry, you said over direction creates the shape, elevation creates the weight. Yeah. So over direction creates your shape. It pushes hair where you want it to go. And elevation creates your weight. We're going to get onto that in a few videos time. Um, also, I explain it an awful lot more with diagrams when I've done demos in salon that I've recorded. Um, I'm going to try and get some magic paper so I can draw on these walls in here. Um, but yeah, over direction creates your shape, elevation creates your weight. Good. So now we're going to layer. What's the time? Goodness me. <laughs> Been on for 40 minutes. And I've just been talking the other time. So we're going to do some layers, okay? Um, we're going to start with our square layer, which is everything up to one point, okay? So if you imagine every single piece of hair has a magnet in the end, and your roof has a magnet, and the hair is just going to boosh, and everything's going to come up to here, okay? Easiest way to explain it. So we're going to start with our section over the top of the ears, which is called our radial section, as some of you will know by now. Um, if you don't know, uh, it's your radial section, <laughs> okay? And uh, this is going to be our first section that we're going to work with. So this is called a square layer. I call it a square layer. It's also your long graduation. So in your course, you will need to pass off your long graduation haircut. Um, but your square layer is also a nice way to work it or word it, okay? So comb the hair all into the front. I was never one for really minding if there was a bit of hair in my guest's face. Um, unless she's got a full face of Dior makeup, don't worry too much. Um, it's not gonna to be too much of an issue if they've got a bit of hair in their face for, for a little bit of time, okay? So spray the hair down, just to show you my sections if I lift them up. Uh, where's my thing? <laughs> so spin you around. So I've got my radial sections in on both sides, okay? So now with layering, we want to have the guest's head upright at all times, okay? The crucial part of that is having the head up. Just by moving her around, you make your work so much easier. When we start layering at 90 degrees of elevation, so we've got zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270. The higher we go, the lighter the hair becomes. As we said, elevation creates your weight. So the lower, the, the heavier, the higher, the lighter, okay? When we want to do someone who's got really fine hair and just wants a little soft layer, you're gonna elevate something into around about here, just above your 90 degrees. 
But say, for instance, she has her head tilted forwards, okay, and we're elevating still at 90 degrees. What's going to happen is when she starts to walk down the street, the length's going to change. So we're going to be actually graduating the hair. And graduation builds weight in hair. So you're going to say, oh, this, this guy on Zoom told me that if I lift at 90 degrees, it's going to take weight out, but it's really heavy. If her head's forwards, that's going to be your reason. OK, so make sure your guest's body position is in the perfect place at all times. OK, it will help you out completely. I hope that makes sense, but it will do in a few weeks time. So we're going to start across the parting and with the small end of our comb, we want to keep a nice piece of tension on the hair and I'm going to work my elevation up to the ceiling. So comb in at the base. I don't think you can really see this, can you? I should have worn a, a lighter top. Comb in at the base, fold the hair over, fingers in behind the comb, okay? And we could, in a sense, just use one hand and keep our section, <laughs> keep our section nice and clean. That's the tension we're looking for. If, if the hair's all baggy and all saggy in the middle, comb it again, okay? So comb in, push across, comb and scissors move at the same time. And I'm going to go into there because otherwise you won't see anymore. And then standing nice and flat, nice tension the whole way up. Really important that we're just going to come across and layer the hair down. Now we're going to start to work our shape down into the sides. So again, comb in, comb across, fingers underneath and just run our section up. And then you're going to find that you run out of hair. Okay. So this piece of hair here will not reach the top piece, okay? If you use this as your guideline, your layers are gonna be way too short. Your layers are determined from your consultation. So you're gonna ask your guest or inform your guest actually, which is better. This is the length of layering that would work best for you. So this is what we're going to do, okay? But if you go too short with it, you're, you're in big trouble. I've done it before, you probably will. The only way to really learn hair cutting and learn what works and what doesn't is by messing hair up. And you'll hear most of your educators <laughs> and colleagues will say, I've messed hair up before and um, you learn from it, which is good. But your guideline is not gonna be your outline or your, your one length, your guideline, you're creating your new guideline. So again, really nice tension and keep that nice and square. And we're going to let our outline drop away. There's the length and it's just dropping out. Okay. So everything's reached up and hit the roof. And now we're going to connect that guideline into the back. So we've just formed our guide through our radial section. Okay. So again, a little bit of spray to wet the hair down. And we want to push this line forwards. So now I'm going to work everything vertically. That looks really messy, that section, doesn't it? That's better. So now I'm gonna, there's me going against my own, um, my own rules. So now we're going to work that section down. So I spin her around again and work vertically down the base. So section number one in the center. And complete this side too. Okay, so we've split our shape, nice and clean sections, keeps us nice and calm. Spin round to the side so you can see where I'm going again. Again, the head is up now, okay? Let's move that so you can see. Her head's up, yeah? As she's got a funny looking chin, but there would be a 90 degree angle in there. You can see my 90 degree angle, that's where we wanna be, okay? And then I'm gonna twist this so you can see properly. Again, small end of the comb. And watch for the outline this time. I've picked up the whole length. Okay, I've picked up everything in this shape. My guideline is coming from this block of hair in here. So my, my radial section is my guide. This area down the base here is all gonna drop away until I reach my guide. That's crucial because otherwise the guide's gonna be the back and we're, our layers are gonna be really short and fall around here somewhere, around her cheekbones and jawline. We wanna make sure the layers fall somewhere down below her collarbone area, okay? Or, her, or his, we don't discriminate. So um, again, comb the hair through nicely. And I'm gonna pick the whole thing up and just watch for the hair that drops away. Okay. 
So we're up at our line and all of this hair that's just about to go all drops away, okay? So now we can really formulate again on where we want to be and where our layers want to be. So there's our guideline. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if you actually can, but it's in there. And this is the piece of hair we want to lose. So again, we're keeping our tension really nice and clean. That's so crucial. And we're going to cut that away and assess where our layers fall. Good. And then we just want to work side by side with our sections. So section number two, we're going to pull back to section number one. Okay, so section number one is in here. This is section number two, and we're gonna put it back into section number one. Okay, so this is where our over direction creates our shape. Okay, so if I were to pull everything out to here and come around the shape like you will do in your uniform layer, what's gonna happen is we're gonna lose a lot of weight under here, okay? Now this is a bit far, I shouldn't really be going into this, but I'm gonna because I'm started. But you, you, as we said earlier, with our density of hair down the base, this hairline is so strong that we're gonna, we need to put some weight back into this section here. Otherwise we're gonna be taking length away from where we don't wanna take length from, okay? So what you'll find is you get your line comes round and then you get a bit of a sort of transparent patch or a bit of a hole around that piece of hair. This is how we control that with over direction. So I want to pull the hair away from its natural fall closer into the center point here so that we keep weight and keep length into that side piece. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, please do say, or please drop something into the chat bar. Um, can you explain what you use the layers for? Is it mainly to take out weight? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. That's exactly what we layer for. It's just your weight removal. Okay. So if somebody's got really thick hair and they want their hair to be a bit more voluptuous and a bit more sort of sassy and movable, we'll layer it down. Depending on how high you lift it is how short your layers will go or how much volume you can create in the hair. But you're absolutely right, Sarah. It is just to take your weight out of hair. Okay. And it adds bounce and it adds movement and it adds a lot more stuff to it. But fundamentally, it is just to take weight away. Okay. So following in from over direction, or over direction, if I was taking section number two up, it would be there. But I want to take section two back into section number one. Hope you all can see that. So this is two sections in here, so don't get too confused. But section two, if I were coming out with no over direction, it would be coming out into about there. But I want to pull it back into here just to gradually increase the length of travel and increase the length of that layer into the side so that we control that area around the ears. Okay, so again, elevate high, our outline length drops away. My over direction, I'm pulling that away from its natural form slightly just to create my square shape. Okay, and then section number three, because she's got quite fine hair, I'm gonna go for three sections, but if you go for four or five, it's not wrong. And again, we're gonna over direct our section away from where it needs to be. So if section number three were out off the base, it would be somewhere out here because that's where the hair naturally wants to go. But I'm over directing back into section number two and we're creating that square line into there. Okay. So now we're gonna cross check. So cross checking is not something that a teacher or educator does to see if you're doing it right or wrong. If you feel like you're getting a bit mixed up, stop, cross check, realize that you probably are going to be doing it right and carry on. But cross checking is your most important tool for just checking your work. So if you're working something vertically, we cross check horizontally. If you're working diagonally, we cross check the other way diagonally. So you go opposite to what you're working and really important that you elevate to where you cut the hair to. So if I, if I cut the hair over here, I'm gonna cross check it over there. If I cut something from the back and pulled it round to her nose, I'm gonna cross check with the opposite section all the way over to her nose, okay? If you get lazy and um, cross check somewhere where you didn't cut the hair, you're gonna cut things off that you don't wanna cut off. 
Okay, so I will exp I'll show you that now actually. So if I cross check this with a horizontal section up to where I cut the hair, we can see that that's dead square. Okay, you probably can't even see that from back here, but I can see that that is square. If there's any little bits, we can take those away, but let's see if I can show you. That's, that's quite square, yeah. But if I get lazy and I'll, I think I'll just cross check it down here somewhere, when I do, if we can see that the line is a lot more bitty and it goes up into the corner, okay? So then I can think, oh my God, I'm going to get rid of that. But then you're taking too much length of your weight, okay? So really crucial when you're cross-checking, you go against the shape. So if we're working vertically, use horizontal sections, but lift it to where you cut the hair. That's very, very important, okay? And then we're going to do the same into the uh, left-hand side, <laughs> into the left. And exactly the same, but this time we're going to push away from ourselves, depending on where you like to stand. I personally, I stand all the time in the left hand side of the guest. I find it easier to pull and push this way. Some people will say to you, come and stand the other way. So you're always pushing, pulling towards yourself. Completely up to you. There's no right or wrong answer for where you stand. It's just your comfort. Again, back to feeling comfortable, back to feeling okay and feeling good about what you're working and where you're going with your hair cutting. Okay. Um, similar with colouring, you, you want to stand in the nice place for the colour. But as long as you feel comfortable with it, the most difficult part of pushing hair away when you're over directing is pushing far enough. It can feel really strange not pull, pushing too far. I mean, that's too far. So I'll come back here and then you have to start again. Okay. But however you feel comfortable in standing or wherever you want to move around to, please do. In my, I don't mind if people stand completely in the front as long as they get it perfect. That's absolutely fine. Okay. So again, we're going to comb the hair through nicely and over direct section number two into section number one. So again, you can see the over direction there. If it was section two was out of the base, it would be in there because that's where the hair wants to come out to, okay? But we want to push the hair back to maintain length around the ears and over the top of the ear, okay? And section number three, again, lift high. And... We're going to pick all of this hair up just so you can see which pieces do and which pieces don't mix or meet, I should say, not mix. And section three, back into section two. My outline will drops away and just take that off. Okay. And again, a cross check because we've worked vertically, we're gonna cross check horizontally and I'm going to lift directly up to the ceiling because that's where I cut the layers in, yeah? And we see that it's nice and clean, all right? Uh, again, any questions, please do jump in. Um, I will try and answer everything that I have. If anyone, everyone is feeling okay, then that's absolutely fine too. Um, shows I'm doing my job. <laughs> Um, but I am here for questions. So if anybody has anything, if you don't understand something, please do ask me. Um, also, if you don't want to, if you don't want to, we can just ask me afterwards. Um, I am agree. I'm just a bit confused about the cross checking. Yep. What What are you confused about? What's um, What What's What? Like I just don't know if like uh, maybe I just switched off for that tiny little bit, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> how to do. You, uh, like, where do you pull it from to cross, cross check if you've like, if you think you've gone wrong? Yeah, good question. Um, that's a very good question. And cross checking is it's something that confuses everybody because I know when I was like, I did, I was like, what are you doing? Like, why are you cross checking? But your cross check is is it's just picking up a piece of hair. I, I, let me know if this doesn't make sense, but you're just coming across your length. So we've layered all of this section in here. So we want to check that it's clean and check that the work is perfect. So I'm just going to, it doesn't matter if I take it from down here or take it from up here, I'm still cross checking my layering. Does that make sense? So we, I want to make sure that my layers when they're falling internally here are going to be balanced. So by doing that, I'm just going to lift that up to here. You can look at it visually if you, if you can. 
I find that quite difficult. But if I've got layers in this chunk here, I only really want to be cross-checking this top piece because if the top piece is perfect, I know this piece under here is going to be right as well. Does that make sense? So then we just come across the look and think, right, let's have a look to see if that's right. All of my layering has been vertical and we've lifted it all to here. So by doing this, this line, a horizontal line, I'm sure that if I lift this up, I can see if I've got a longer piece in there or something like that. So when we lift. It's oh, yeah. Yeah. But say, for instance, I'd over directed too far. What we'd find is if I pull this up, what we'd find is uh, this piece of hair here would come a little bit longer. Does that make sense? So then I know that I've gone a bit too far with my with my over direction. So I can come back into that section and just do less over direction and, and clean that down. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll make a bit of an error in this side, actually. That could be quite a good bit to do. Um, and show you what I mean and demonstrate that a little bit more. So as we start to come into the, the sides, we're going to over direct slightly backwards. So I'm going to over direct too far and just show you what I mean. Um, by, by my over direction. So we're going to come across our radial and then work vertically again into the look. And I want to over direct this back. But if I over direct too far, hopefully you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to lift up and pull back into my shape here. So this could be quite good to see. And then if I show you my cross check, I'm looking for something that is a little bit slightly short to long, but it's going to be a little bit too far because my over direction has gone a little bit too mad. It should be. Yeah. So you can see in there, I've got my line coming in and then these pieces here are too high. So I know just by cross checking, I've got a little bit of irregularity to my layering. So I'm going to come back into my shape and I'm going to change my over direction. Does that make sense? Does yeah, that yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. So cross-checking is not something to be, to be worried about. When someone comes over and says, oh, I'm going to cross-check your work, don't worry about it because it's not them looking for you to see if you've done something wrong. It's just to see, it's, it's my, primarily a tool for you to see, are you on the right track and have you actually done things that you wanted to do. Um, Cross-checking is, is very, very crucial when you're coming into your shorter work to make sure that your hair is absolutely perfect 100% of the time. And I found with, with the um, examinations that I did myself, um, they were quite tough, but cross-checking saved, saved me because I was just about to present a certain model and um, I cross-checked a little piece and it was wrong and I couldn't see it visually. So cross-checking is just your way to create your um, stunning work. So then we see we can come in and everything's a little bit cleaner. But if there was a little piece popping out of there, then I know I need to come back into my shape after my cross-check. Okay, what's the time? 12 o'clock. God. Um, so again, into this left-hand side now, we're going to do the same piece. So I'm going to spin around so you can see and again take my section from in behind my radial which is going to be my guide or my guide's going to be in there and comb the hair really nicely and just slightly over direct back into my shape pick up my guide and run through and then last little piece in the front, I'm going to lift up, the outline will drop away, and there's my shape. Okay, so now if we check our balance on the layers, the balance is fine. And the balance, the reason the balance is fine on your layers is because you're standing in the same place, you're just over directing things into your shape. So if you're, as we said earlier, with our, with our shoulders, if my shoulders drop, my, my fingers automatically move from there to there, yeah? Without me doing anything, my, fi my fingers move and my body moves where I pull the hair to. So keep yourself nice and flat, keep your shape high, and you will create that squareness, okay? So when we have a little look at what we've, what we've 
informed on what we've created here. Uh, hopefully we can, it's hard to see, <laughs> but there's layers knocking about in there and it all sits quite nice and formulated. Please let us know your YouTube channel or subscribe to it and watch video again, plus more, especially if you explain. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of stuff on there that's unlisted, as I say. So the reason it's unlisted is because certain situations like this where um, we've got students on um, and possibly students with their videos on. So I will get the permission of those students to send you certain videos, um, which we will be absolutely fine to do. Obviously, Kaylee Jane, um, my colleague, as I said, to her, I said about her earlier, she's got lots of colouring videos on there as well and um they're fantastic so yes i will send the link into the group so we're going to touch now very very quickly on forward graduation face framing um people call it a bangs for instance um which is um something in the front to give you some shape okay now this is difficult and so well, it's been made difficult. Some people, um, they, they really do struggle with this. Um, and it's because there's no real technique behind it until now, basically. Um, people say, oh, pull it right over here and cut it here and then pull it right over there and cut it there, um, which works if you can do that. If you're visually, you can work like that. I can't visually work like that. Um, also, people say just comb it forwards and do it freehand. So come up freehand and just do it like that in the mirror. That works. If you find that works and you can do it like that, please do. It doesn't work for me. Um, I went through my whole training asking people, how do you make sure your balance is right? How do you make sure your full graduation works well? How do I get that real nice flick to our bangs and something that sits on the jawline? And I know, so I'll just, just do it visually. But there's a better way. I'm going to show you. So um, you've got to utilize your, your guest's bone structure. Now, my mannequin, <laughs> she's not the prettiest mannequin when you when you can see her in real life. She's got um, quite a pointy nose. Lip line is, um, top lip's a little bit strange. Chin line is absolutely brilliant. So we're going to form off the jawline, okay? Cheekbones as well. She's got quite nice cheekbones. It's a little bit weird saying this about a mannequin. Um, you'll agree but uh, <laughs> it's our job, so whatever. Um, and what we're gonna do is formulate something off the facial features. Now, earlier I said the, the key of my job as well is to, to tell you how to get busy and to, how to explain your work through to somebody um, or your guest in salon. Now, I used, to, I used to say things about their bone structure and their face shape. So I'd say to a lady, oh, your cheekbones are amazing, or you've got some really good jawbone, or your eyes are beautiful. Why don't we do something in the front there to make that area stand out a little bit? There's also areas of somebody that they may not be too happy about. They may not like their neckline, for instance. They may not like their jawline. Um, so by doing... By influencing and emphasizing something like cheekbones can take focus away from other areas that somebody may not like, if that makes sense. Um, so this is what forward graduation does or a bangs does or anything like that. So we're gonna take three sections for now. Later in the, in the lockdown, we'll do a few more sections back and show you a different layering technique or later in your education, I don't wanna confuse you but we're gonna go for three fine sections, okay? And this is going to give you completely balanced, completely workable areas in the front. All the difference comes with the length that you choose. And I'll explain what I mean by that. But if you want a really nice, soft, sassy, cheekbone length bangs if you cut it around about the lip to chin area you're going to leave yourself that length to flick if you cut it on the cheekbones you're going to have just a little bit of hair that sits flat you've got to allow for that movement as you know you you leave length in i don't want to belittle use you leave length in there to give that flick okay if you're working something a little bit more forward graduation you want to come a little bit lower and the lower you come the more forward grad forward graduation you're going to create okay so Coming into the front, making sure our sections are balanced into here and clip that away. 
Okay, so we can see section there and section in there. And push the head away, okay? Wherever you work on the body, if you're on the sides, push away. The back, push away. Front, push away. Minimizes outline graduation or anything that we don't want. It's getting very dark in here, isn't it? <laughs> if you can't see, let me know as well. I've got, I've got a lamp underneath here, but uh, <laughs> it seems to just be sort of shining off my glasses. Right. So now we're going to use her face as our point of contact, okay? So we're going to stand directly in front of her, okay? Again, keeping your shoulders nice and flat is crucial, okay? And we're going to take our first piece of hair, the width of her nose, okay? So this is going to be our first focal point. This is where our, we're going to choose our shape. So let's spin around. Let me call her wire. You can see that my first section in there is the width of my lady's nose okay my elevation is my so my weight is going to be just off of her nose so if you pull it round and separate the hair over her nose you're pushing too far down lift just off the base of the nose okay and we're going to choose our length so i want to keep length in this block because we may have a long time here so i'm going to keep my length on the block quite long and just cut that square, okay? Now, with our four graduation, we want to basically keep the length that we've cut. So we've got our one length is coming into here, and we're gonna, if I get another comb, our one length's coming into here, and our length comes down to here, okay? If we come back and take all of this block off here, you're gonna lose all of this strength in the line that you've just created, or just taken however long it's taken to cut that length in. So really what we want to do is just formulate a curve in here. So we just take off the, the support or the stability of that corner and flow that line up into somewhere into here so that you just take off that front corner, if that makes sense. When we're bangs and things like that, you come a little bit higher with it. So you're gonna come up to the point of the chin, still keeping that stability down in the front, but allowing yourself the length to kick back, okay? So we're going to stand directly in the front and control this corner. That is crucial that we don't lose that corner. So what we're going to do is use the chin as her focal point because my length is long. But if your length is coming shorter, we use the corners of the lips or we use the point of the nose or we use the cheekbones as our focal point for where our fingers face. That is because the face is symmetrical. So whenever you see an artist doing a painting of somebody's face, they, they do that sort of line across there and then the line down the middle, don't they? And then they can get the balance of the eyes, the balance of the lips, the balance of the nose and the jawline. Okay, it's similar with hair. If we want to make sure we've got our balance, we're gonna use the point of the chin or we're gonna use the corners of the lips or we're gonna use the point of the nose because that way you're sure that your balance is always gonna be sitting right. And the further angled, the lighter the hair is going to be, okay? So let's just do it. <laughs> so standing directly in the front, I'm going to angle my fingers down to hit the floor so that my knuckles pop up and hit the, the point of the guest's chin. Okay, again, if I do it in the front, I would be standing in the front, but you wouldn't be able to see. So down, point to the chin with your knuckles, okay? And point to the floor with your fingertips. That means we're controlling our line, but also formulating our shape and cut that into the shortest point that we created in the middle. Then again, we're gonna pull these sections here forwards, point down to the floor again, knuckles point up to the person and run our line up, okay? Again, and that's for right-handed people. Left-handed people, you're gonna be fingertips up on this side, <laughs> right? On the, the right-hand side, we do the same thing, but point your knuckles down to the floor. So I would be in the front again Elevation stays the same, but just make sure we get our fingertips facing up to the chin line. Okay, this is tough. <laughs> so, again, down, point your fingertips up to the chin. Hopefully, you can see. And knuckles are facing the floor this time, and we run the line in. And again, I'll spin that round here actually. A little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing here. That's better. <laughs> so, 
Now we pull into the front, fingertips face up to the, uh, the jawline and my knuckles face down to the floor. Elevation stays the same and we run our line. That will guarantee your balance. I promise you every single time your balance will always be perfect unless her face isn't symmetrical, but chances are it's going to be, okay? And if it's not symmetrical, don't go telling her, oh, your face isn't symmetrical. That's why it's not balanced. <laughs> You've got to find a better way to actually say it. Um, section number two is very fine. And we push it back to the point of the ear, okay? Or the top of the ear. So again, very fine section into here. And what can I do now? So I don't want it to be so heavy, okay? So if I were to pull the length down to that same point of elevation, it's going to be quite heavy. So what can I do to make sure it gets a little bit lighter, this second section than the first? Anybody got any idea? So if my first section's here and I want it to be a little bit lighter, think of your elevations. Give it a couple of seconds. Doesn't matter if you don't. Um, take a stab at it if you do. Over direct, no, not so much. Over direct is the shape. So we are over directing, you're absolutely right. We're over directing the hair away because we want the hair to push back off the face. Yeah. Lift then, yeah, absolutely. We want to lift it. Yeah. So you're bright in both senses there. I shouldn't have said no because you are right. We are over directing the hair to create our shape, but we want it to be a little bit, a little bit lighter. So we're just going to lift it higher. 45 degrees, yeah. We can go to 45 degrees if we want to. So here's section one. Say that's at say 25 degrees because it's not at zero, is it? Yeah. Next one, we can lift to that 45 degrees if we want to. So yeah, absolutely. Thinking of weight and thinking of weight distribution is primarily what do we want to see? Do we want it to be heavy or do we want it to be heavy and getting lighter? If we want it to be getting lighter, we just lift each section higher. Yeah. So it makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. It makes sense to me. But now we don't need to angle our fingers too much anymore. We're just going to be following our guideline. So our guideline is formed and we just want to run that line. And again, we just want to run that line into the side. If we start to angle our fingers again, it's going to be a little bit difficult because we're now elevating as we go. So we've got our guideline in there. As long as we're running that same guide, it doesn't matter about angling our fingers too much anymore. But as you both said, um, we're over directing to create our shape, but we're just lifting our line to create a little bit less of a weighty feel. So as, uh, as Matthew said, we're just lifting up to 45 degrees. So section number three, again, I wanna go a little bit lighter still. So I'm just gonna lift this last little section just that little bit higher. What this elevation does is if we're thinking of bangs and your everything's come down to one point on a bangs, it's gonna be very blocky and not have that uh, stability and that sort of spelt silhouette, if you will, that runs that line off onto the shape and connects back into here. So with our over direction, we're increasing the length back into the look because our layers are still nice and long. So we're pulling the hair away, we're creating a corner, but that corner is going to meet. I'm getting too far now, so I'll stop saying that. But with our elevation, we're creating a softer entry for the for the layers. If everything was just down into one point, it's going to be a little bit too. Yeah, no worries. Um, that's fine. Don't worry. I'll put it on the. I'll put it online. Um, so last section here. Our last section was at 45. So we're just going to lift a little bit higher. Our head is back. Yeah. So it's not too far forwards, it's not upright. So if it was upright, we'd be down here somewhere. So we're just lifting a little bit higher again and picking off that slight shape. Okay, section into here and into here and again into these two side bits. And we're running out of hair because we're over directing the hair away, but balance is still on point. Okay, and that's the absolutely crucial thing. As we said straight away at the very beginning, the balance is key. So as long as we get that nice balance in the hair, it doesn't matter, okay? Everything we do is gonna be perfect. And the guest isn't gonna say, oh, I don't like that. They might do, but chances are they won't, okay? So if we remove our clips, 
and just have a look at what we've actually done in the front. It's quite difficult to see. I'm not going to blow dry this today because obviously you've done all your blow drying, so I don't want to waste your time. You've got a lot of work to be doing. But if we see down, I'll move that side out of the way so you can see it a little bit clearer. But we've got that slight forward graduation look. Okay, so you'll see the shorter fill getting gradually longer into that final point into the front. So our over direction from the front to back creates that point into the front and our over direction from front to front, to front if you will, um, <laughs> that didn't make any sense, did it? Creates this little bit of softness in here, but because we've elevated higher, you can see the flicking that's starting to create, that's gonna help the hair sit back off of the face and help the hair to push away from where we want it to go. Okay, I hope that made sense. Um, I hope uh, you all enjoyed that, I suppose. Um, that will be it for today. Um, as we say, keep your balance, that's the key, to keep your body position nice and clean, to keep your over direction working nicely, your elevation creates your weight, over direction creates your shape, for graduation, use the body, use the body parts, use the cheekbones, use the symmetry of somebody's body. If you're pulling hair away from the front to the back, keep that, keep your sections moving into your shoulder blades. Everything connects on your body. You will go into this in your in your education, but everything connects. So utilize the connection if that makes sense. Yeah, and haircut is not that difficult. If you understand where to stand, you keep your body nice and limp, uh, nimble, nimble, limb, limb, not limb, we've got limbs. Uh, keep your body moving, <laughs> uh, you'll be fine. All right, um, so I'm gonna send a link to this video in the group. Um, that will also be a link to the YouTube page that Kaylee, Jane and I have done. Um, there's loads of videos on there. Um, there's videos that are unlisted, but I'm gonna get permission to put those videos into your groups as well. Um, Good luck with your uh, good luck with your with your education. I'm sure I'll see you again. Hopefully, I'll come over and see you guys in Camden. Um, keep safe. Keep well. Keep going outside. Go out for walks and stuff. I'm not going outside. That's terrible. Go out for fitness. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna stop because this is terrible. <laughs> uh, thank you very much um, for joining me, um, and I'll hopefully see you soon. All right. <laughs> Take care. Bye.